In this online lecture, I want to show you how to use all the reactions we've learned up to this point in synthesis of molecules that have benzene rings. And what I want to introduce to you here is some of the strategy that we use. So watch what happens in these sample problems. Let's say we want to synthesize the molecule here on the right from the benzene on the left. Well, here's the first thing to think about strategically. Remember, if you want to make this molecule, it looks like we want to put an alkyl group on a benzene ring. And remember, we've learned how to do that. That's using Friedel Crafts alkylation. And if you remember correctly, Friedel Crafts alkylation has a lot of limitations. Remember, it's a very sensitive reaction. So it might be smart to, to do Friedel Crafts alkylation first to get it out of the way so we don't run into any problems later on. Now, I'm not saying this is going to work every time, but it's a good place to start. So let's do this. Let's do our synthesis. Let's keep our eye on the prize, keep him down here in the lower left, and let's start out with our first reaction here. What we're going to do is just like we said, do Friedel Crafts alkylation. We want a two carbon fragment on the ring, so this is what it would look like. And of course, the product of this reaction is this right here. So we've got that taken care of here. Let's move on to the next reaction that we should do. Now's a good time to maybe put on that nitro group, the NO2 group. And remember we learned in a previous online lecture that the reagents are HNO3, H2SO4. We also saw in a previous online lecture that that ethyl group on the benzene ring is an ortho pair directing activator. So he'd like to put the nitro group ortho or para to him. Para, however, is what we want, but we would get some ortho product. However, it's very likely that the para molecule and the ortho molecule have different boiling points or physical properties, which means we would be able to physically separate these two molecules, which means our synthesis so far is valid. So let's just say we did that and we isolated our para product. What should we do next? Well, we have to add on a Cl this would be the time to do that. And here's why. I want you to notice that every reaction I did was done in a particular sequence to yield a maximum result. And watch what happens in this last step. Remember, the ethyl group is an ortho pair directing activator. So he would like to add the Cl ortho to him or para, but para is taken up. Now the NO2 group, remember, is a meta directing deactivator. So he would like to add the Cl meta to him. Notice my last reaction here has an agreement between the two substituents. Therefore, both of these substituents push the Cl to that position, giving us the product that we want. This is much better than comparable to, let's say, a last step where the two substituents were kind of fighting over where the third substituent should add. So if at all possible, try to shoot for something like this in your synthesis problems. Let's look at another problem here. How would I synthesize this molecule on the right? Well, first of all, notice we have this huge alkyl group right here. And like I said, we might want to take care of that first through some Friedel Crafts alkylation. However, we already have an issue here with this particular substituent. The thing is here, in order to get him on a benzene ring, you might be thinking this should be the alkyl halide and the AlCl3 that you should use. And remember we learned the mechanism here, the Cl complexes with the Al, and we end up with this as a result right here. Now right where that carbocation is, is where we'd like to connect to the benzene ring. But remember we learned that it's not going to stay this way. That primary carbocation is unstable. So we should expect, of course, a hydride shift, making the new carbocation here on the tertiary carbon. And if you remember correctly, this is the carbon that's going to add to the benzene ring, which is clearly, let's go back to our problem here, not what we want. Remember, we want this carbon to connect to the benzene ring. But we learned also in a previous online lecture how to get around this problem. So let's do that here. But first, let's keep our eye on the prize. Let's put our product down here on the lower left. And let me show you how this synthesis is going to go down. Remember, to get around carbocation rearrangement in Friedel Crafts alkylation is we do Friedel Crafts acylation. 
and we just have to make sure that the acyl reactant that we're using here has the same carbon frame as what we're after. Notice the substituent we're trying to put on is made up of four carbons. Three carbons in a row and a methyl on the middle carbon. And look at our acyl reagent here. That's at least the framework. So let me show you what I mean by that. The product of this reaction, remember, is this right here. So far, we have the right carbon framework of the substituent. We just need to reduce that C double bond O into a CH2 and we'll have exactly the substituent we want. But here's where strategy comes in. Before we reduce the C double bond O, we might want to use him right now as it is for his directing ability. And here's what I mean by that. Before reduction, we'd want to add Cl2. And the reason why is think about this. Right now, our substituent right here, because it is a C double bond O, it's right now a meta directing deactivator which means all substituents added would be added meta to him right here. And notice that's exactly what we want. When we're done, we want the Cl to be meta to this carbon fragment group right here. So adding the Cl now would give us this. This is what I mean by learning some of the strategy here. This is something that's obviously very unique to organic chemistry. Now watch how we keep going here, how we're going to get to our final product. Now is the time for me to reduce that C double bond O. And if you remember, these are the necessary reagents, H2PD or H2PDC. That reduces the C double bond O into CH2. And let's do this here. Let's move our methyl up so it looks exactly like what we're going after. And we're ready now for the final reaction here. Now what we would do is we have to add on that SO3H group, so we'll add H2SO4. And notice again here the setup for this last step. We have this substituent right here in green. He's an ortho para director, so he'd like to add the electrophile either here or here. The CL, remember, is also an ortho para director, so he would like to add electrophiles ortho and para to him. So again, we have this last step being an agreement here. Both substituents want the SO3H exactly where we want it. Remember, we'd get very little product where the SO3H is between the two substituents at the top position. Remember, we learned that as the meta rule. But some of our product would be exactly this right here, which is what we're after. Of course, we'd also get some side product where the SO3H goes to the other position on the ring. But as long as one of our products is the product we're after, then it's a valid synthesis. Let's look at one more sample problem here to make sure you got this. Now look at the reasoning here. The first thing you want to do is make some general observations, such as we want to put an OH group on a benzene ring. Well, remember, OH itself typically behaves as either a base or a nucleophile. So if it's nucleophilic, it means that adding an OH, we might have to do nucleophilic aromatic substitution, NAS. And I just want to remind you here what's true about NAS that we learned in a previous online lecture. Remember, in order to pull off this reaction, you need a reasonable leaving group. And ortho to the leaving group, we need some kind of electron withdrawing group or para to the leaving group, we need an electron withdrawing group. Either one would work, two would be better, but this is the necessary setup. Let me show you how this truth affects our strategy here. Let's go back to our problem here. Notice it's possible that the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction could be our last reaction of the synthesis. The reason why is because we have an electron withdrawing group ortho to the OH here, and we have another one, para to the OH. Which means if we had a leaving group right here, we can replace him with the OH. So that means let's put on all the other substituents first and leave the nucleophilic aromatic substitution for last. So let me show you that. And again, let's keep our eye on the prize here. We're gonna synthesize this. Here's the first step of our synthesis. First, we're gonna add the Br2. And what that does is add the Br right here. Now again, just follow me here. I'm teaching you the strategy. Don't worry about if you wouldn't know to think to do this.
Let's look at the next reaction now. Watch what happens here. Now I'm going to add on the nitro group. Remember, Br is ortho para directing, so I will get some para product and I will get some side ortho product as well. But we only care about the para, so we're going to keep working with him. Now watch what happens here. Now I'm going to add on another Br. And what we have so far is that the Br substituent on the benzene ring here is ortho para directing. So he'd like to add the new Br here, ortho and para to him, but para is taken up. Whereas the NO2 group, remember, is a meta director, so he'd like to add the Br meta to him. So again, we have the nice agreement case here, which means we would end up with this as a result. And notice what happened here. The reason why I did these reactions in the particular sequence is, remember, look at the product we're after. We said we needed a decent leaving group at this position where the OH is so that the electron withdrawing groups would be ortho and para to it. And notice that's exactly what we have here. Through our series of reactions, we now have Br, a decent leaving group, sitting right in the position where we need him to be. So that means we're ready for the last step here. All we're going to do now is the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction and we're going to be positive that the top Br is substituted because it's only that Br that has the electron withdrawing groups ortho and para to it. So we expect this product in a high yield and we now have achieved our goal here. Now remember, when it comes to getting good at these synthesis problems, it really is all about practicing as many problems as you can do. I've shown you three here to give you an idea of how the strategy works. But by no means does this completely prepare you for your next orgo exam. You should go to your textbook and do as many synthesis problems now as possible.